Full body workouts are superior to body part splits for building muscle and performance. Our next caller is Michelle from New Jersey. Hey, Michelle, how can we help you? Hey, um, so thank you all, guys. Thank you all so much for all of your content. I love you guys. I listen to you all the time. So I uh, just wanted to say thank you for everything that you do. Um, my question is more so for me as a newbie personal trainer. Um, I have been a personal trainer for about a year now, but I actually have to take a pause on personal training because I am performing in a Broadway show in New York City right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is more so for my husband and um, just learning your techniques and what you got, uh, what your ph philosophy is. So um, my husband is the complete opposite of me. Yeah. <laughs> he is 6'3", he is 33, he weighs about 175, 100 to 100, can get up to 180 pounds, very tall, very lean, um, skinny, and he used to run a lot of the marathons back in the day. Now we don't run any marathons anymore. I never ran marathons, but he doesn't run any marathons. We're strictly into strength training and uh, building muscle. Um, so we got into weightlifting by listening or watching, I'm sorry, by reading Mike Mass to use bigger, leaner, stronger, thinner, leaner, stronger. And that's when I really got into weightlifting and becoming a personal trainer. Um, we had take a, took a break from BLS and now we had just purchased, he had just purchased uh, MAPS Anabolic. And I am looking at that and kind of comparing the two and trying to see what your philosophy is based off of anabolic with, uh, versus BLS. Um, I see, I know in BLS, there's a lot of, uh, big compound movements, three minute rest, two to three minute rest in between, um, you know, focusing on those major muscle groups. But when I look at MAPS anabolic, I feel like there's a lot of trigger sessions. The first three weeks is focusing on um, more, it, it seems as though for me, more, more endurance because it's less rest periods, hitting more muscle groups. Um, you're in the gym more five times a week. And I am curious on what you all's thoughts are on versus the two and trying to find a happy medium for my husband and also i'm learning at that same time <laughs> and i also have a um, bodybuilding coach that i work with for a potential to do a show by the end of uh this time next year and his theories of like only training two times in a row no training back to back tempo training, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just trying to find a happy medium with my husband. And he's like, what should I do? I'm so confused. Yeah. So I'll, <laughs> uh, I'll give you the short and the long of it. Here's a short, have him follow maps anabolic. It'll, it'll blow away pretty much any of the other programs, especially for someone like him. Now here's some of the differences. Mike Matthews, very smart guy, great friend of ours. He follows the science very, very well. So he, and this is what he does very well. He looks at the studies. He makes sense of the studies and then his workouts are based off of scientific research. Now MAPS programs all of also follow the scientific research. However, they are also written by three trainers who trained for over two decades and worked with lots of people. So let's, let me give you a, a comparison or a difference, right? With bigger, leaner, stronger. And if we compare that to MAPS anabolic, once you get past free, uh, pre phase with MAPS anabolic, you're hitting the whole body three days a week. With bigger, leaner, stronger, it's more like two days a week. It's a little bit more of a split in bigger, leaner, stronger, less of a split, more full body in MAPS anabolic. Why the difference? Well, here's why. If you train a body part two days versus three days a week, but the volume is is the same and the intensity is roughly similar, studies will show that the gains are going to be right around the same. However, what we understand as coaches and trainers is the more often you can practice certain lifts the better you get at them and the faster you get at them. So in other words, rather than doing, let's say, you know, 20 sets for your legs uh, twice a week where you're doing 10 sets on work, one workout and 10 sets on another workout, what if we did 20 sets over three workouts? Even if the gains look similar in the studies, we know through experience, working out your legs, practicing squats, front squats, lunges, more frequently tends to produce better movement patterns, you tend to get better at those movements faster. And the strength gains, and this is what the literature will support, the strength gains tend to be superior because strength is skill just as much as it is uh, bigger muscles. As far as rest periods are concerned, 
They compare, when you look at studies that compare <clears throat> long rest periods to short rest periods head to head, it's true that long rest periods build more muscle, but here's where people mess up. All the rest periods, within reason, still build muscle, and your body will adapt to a particular rest period if you stick to it all the time, meaning if you do something novel, like go from three minutes to a minute and a half, you start to get the ball rolling again. So what you find with MAPS Anabolic is this phasing of rest periods where it goes, some of them are long, like phase one, and phase three, the rest periods are much uh, shorter. And then lastly, I'll touch on trigger sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, trigger sessions are not the same as workouts. Trigger sessions are literally like, you you know, you're getting a little bit of a pump a few days a week on your off days. It's not a workout. It's active recovery. Yeah, and it's, it's sending, not cardiovascular. And it's maintaining the muscle building signal you sent the day before. The day before is your hard workout. But what happens is you send this loud muscle building signal with your hard workout, and it peaks at about 24 to 48 hours. We've studied this through what's called muscle protein synthesis. And then it starts to decline very quickly. If you do some trigger sessions, which they're not like workouts, you're not tearing muscle down, you're not doing that, but you're getting a bit of a pump. What you do is you're keeping that muscle building signal up higher for longer. This is why you'll notice that male carriers who don't go to the gym and do hard calf workouts, all they do is walk a lot, they still have muscular calves. They're not doing any bodybuilding, but you still see muscle being built in their calves or mechanics in their forearms. They're not at the gym doing forearm workouts with barbells and dumbbells, but for some reason, they've got strong muscular forms. Trigger sessions still provide that value. And so putting those on the off days turbocharges the rest of the workout. And that's part, that's really what makes MAPS Anabolic there, so special. There's also one more thing that you're missing that I think is one of the most valuable things and one of the things that attracted me to working with you guys when, I, when we first looked at MAPS Anabolic before Mind Pump even started is if I have 10 clients um, that are training with me for the next three months, of those 10 clients, maybe one or two of them never miss a week for the entire three months. Most of them, life happens in a week they take off or they might have a bad week of training where they only get in the gym once or twice. I know when I'm training them on a full body routine like MAPS Anabolic, they're not going to have as much of a setback if they missed one or two days training because they're still hitting a full body workout. This right. is the biggest flaw with body part splits. Not that they're not effective, not that it doesn't follow the science, is that it's missing the behavioral component, which is where the experience comes in with the three of us who have trained thousands of people over the last two decades, is I know behaviors and I know that it's inevitable, including myself, I'm going to have a week where I don't train as frequently. And when I have a full body routine, I hit every muscle group still, even when I only trained one day that week. And when you're talking about long-term gains and maintaining a physique, that person is better off. That's why we know it's superior for most people. Does it, does it mean that if somebody never misses a workout and they train splits for three, four, six months, that they won't have similar results? No, if you don't ever miss a workout and you're consistent as hell, then that's not bad. But I, we also wrote programs considering people's behaviors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, M Michelle, you said you're going to become a, you're you're becoming a personal trainer. Uh, I have my personal trainer certification. I've been certified for a year through ACE. Okay. And um, but I am on a Broadway show right now performing. Uh, I do about eight shows a week with that show. Uh, doing the personal training and doing that at the same time is really difficult because yeah, <laughs> I'm here all the time. So um, what what you so if you really want to, this is what I advise to you to really learn uh, programming because you're not going to get. The, all the information from MAPS Anabolic. MAPS Anabolic is a piece of the bigger picture. In fact, what we recommend to people often is they follow our MAPS programs kind of one after another. So, you know, MAPS Anabolic for a few months, then you can go to MAPS Performance and then MAPS Aesthetic and then maybe MAPS Strong, training in the, these different modalities, the different phases, different exercises, really develops a well-rounded, strong, functional body. And long-term, you get great results. So, I recommend you do that. Kind of look at all of our programs so you can kind of get a, a better idea. You're not going to get all the answers from MAPS Anabolic. And then here's the other thing. The most valuable program that we have for you as a trainer is MAPS Prime and Prime Pro, by yeah. far. N none of our programs are going to benefit you as a coach training other people like those two, program those two programs, by far. I mean, you take those two programs, you apply some of the principles to your clients, you'll blow away 99% of the trainers that are out there. I'm telling you right now. So it's not, you know, you'll learn from MAPS Anabolic, all those other programs, 
but it's Prime and Prime Pro. So if you don't have those, I'm going to send those to you because I really want oh, you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, we really value trainers and coaches, mm -hmm. and I think that's something that you'll you'll gain value from. And then as far as your husband is concerned, go Maps Anabolic, three foundational workouts a week, trigger sessions on the off days. Of course, make sure he feeds his body, uh, and and then watch what happens. Watch the strength and muscle gains. I think you'll be you'll be pleasantly surprised. Definitely. He sees my muscle gains and he's like, why don't I get gains like that? And I'm like, well, you don't eat enough protein. You don't eat enough. <laughs> you don't eat enough than me. And I'm like, you're going to eat completely way more. I'm like five, three, you're five, you're six, two. Like, what do you think? So he never wants to eat any more food. I'm like, you need to eat more, boy. Well, you're, and that's true though, too, right there. Uh, Michelle, if she, if he's not, if he's not getting enough calories and protein, uh, he could be following the best program in the world and he's not going to see a lot of muscle gains. Yeah. So make sure he stays on top of that. If he's hitting his protein intake and hitting his calories, following maps on a bulk, it, it will blow his mind. Yeah. By the way, what, what awesome. brought? If do, can I ask what Broadway show you're going to be a part of? Yeah, I am in uh, Tina, the Tina Turner musical in New York City. Oh, that's great! Uh, very cool. You know, you know, it's I've I've never been to a Broadway show. That's like one of my what? one yeah. of my dreams. I love shows, but I, you know, I've only I've watched some in the Bay Area, and in, in comparison, I know we suck. So, hmm. are you guys in uh, San Jose? Right, we yeah, are. Yeah. Um, I played San Jose with Aladdin the musical in oh. 2000. Oh, no way. Uh, 2019, I was there. Yeah, we were there for six weeks. <laughs> oh, good deal. That's excellent. So do you come to the West Coast very often? How often do you come out this way? Uh, I get out there probably once a year okay. and perform shows. Yep. Okay. And depending on if I'm on tour. Right now I'm in a standing steady show. So the show is like what? just in New York City. But sometimes I go on tour and we will do all the um, whole North America. Well, <laughs> Mich Michelle, we know how to take care of friends. So next time you're out in this area, if you hook us up with some tickets, maybe we'll hook you up hey. with some other stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, now that I know you like theater, that makes sense. So we, we got it. I'll get y'all to hook up. Thank 100%. You. Thank you, Michelle. And we'll send you Prime and Prime Pro, okay? Because as a, as a trainer, I think those are going to really – really provide some tremendous value to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All thank the insight. And I definitely want to be a better trainer. So this is really, really helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Right. No problem. Yeah. I think um, when you compile a routine based off of the studies, you're a lot of the way there, right? If you look at the scientific Well, that's studies, why we, this is why we like Mike so yes. much. This is uh, what all of, I mean, we didn't even know who Mike Matthews was when we first started Mind Pump, and I forget who first introduced us to him, but when we got introduced to him- it was, Well, Doug. Doug knew him first, showed me, and then we were following you, Is that him. why you found him from like e-commerce stuff? Is that why you were marketing? Yeah, I've been following him for quite right. a long time. Because Mike is actually a marketing background who is kind of like a nerd like us. When he gets interested in something, he goes super oh, deep. Oh, he's hyper intelligent. Yeah, guy. and so he went super deep on fitness, and he, you know, he read, you could tell the guys read a ton of studies because the way he has built his program but the 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 one thing that I the one edge okay and I would tell Mike this to his face he's a friend of ours that I think that we have on him is that we actually trained in person people for two decades thousand plus people between uh, the three of us and there's one more component to the science component yeah. and that's the behavioral aspect mm -hmm. of it and you just have if you're a, if your desired outcome as a trainer is to get your client the most results possible you exactly application and behaviors matters and you have to factor that component in and that's why we can't just purely follow the science yes the science should be the foundation but then we're not all in a six month study, you know, or six week study. Well, like I, that's not how people, that's not how people interact in real 100%, world. A hundred percent. And not only that, I'll take it a step further. You, there are no controlled one year, two year, three year long studies, maybe observational where they ask questions and do surveys, but nothing control. When they compare rep ranges, for example, it's like 27, you know, college aged males showing up at a gym, training with, with researchers for three months. Mm -hmm. Like I train people for two years, three years, five, nine years, 10 years. So I see that long rest periods they do build more muscle. I also see that after four months, they don't. Yeah, We got to move to the shorter rest periods, right? Yep. I see that, yes, we could do a body part split and that's going to work just fine. But guess what? Over the course of a year, you're going to miss some workouts, like you said. Yep. Well, now we're missing whole body parts. Right. If we do full body, I also see that when I practice, if I get you to practice squats, a few days a week, it's better than if we practice it one day a week, even if the volume is exactly the same and the studies show that the results from that perspective are the same. So when you when you add both of those together, what you get is 
the is really really effective workout program. And that's the bottom line. Yeah, you know, you always miss the opportunity to shamelessly plug your book. I feel like uh, that would have been the direction to give for other than going. I mean, yes, buying all the programs would be great for the business and all, but I think that your book does a really good job of explaining the philosophy behind. Uh, maps, and I think that anybody who's curious, because this is a question that we get quite a bit. If you get, if you're curious to the philosophy behind maps and why we program and why we write the programs the way we do, then you have to you have to read Resistance Training Revolution. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here, and be sure to subscribe.